Hey guys, Vincent here, and this is the Short Bynet 98. <laughs> The short Bynet 98 is a knife style Bynet with a sawback blade and pressed leather grips. Although in late 1913 and early 1914, late examples would change the pressed leather against wooden grip parts. Unlike a lot of other Imperial German Bynets we took a look at here at the channel, there is no version of this Bynet without a sawback. And again, it features the Mauser single rail mounting system and an all steel construction sheath. The overall length is 375 mm. The blade itself is 255 mm long, 25 mm wide and 6 mm thick. Without the sheath, the bayonet weighs around 410 grams. Let's take a closer look at the history of this fascinating bayonet. On April 1901, Prussia adopted a new short bayonet for independent machine gun units. Independent meaning in this context not attached to a regiment or to a battalion. Prussian units got these bayonets in 1902 and Bavarian troops got their hands on them in early 1903. I don't know the official name of the bayonet when it was adopted but I know that in 1908 this Bynet got the official name Kurzer Seitengewehr 98 für Maschinengewehrschützen, meaning Short Bynet 98 for Machine Gun Crews. Since this official name is awfully long, we will just continue to use the short term KS 98 from here on now. Even though this Bynet was originally designed for Machine Gun Crews, they were looking for a short, handy Bynet with a sawback to help them set up their machine gun positions, a lot of other units started to use this bayonet as well. The KS-98, standing in the tradition of the Prussian Hirschfänger, with its bird head pommel and the pressed leather grips, became popular with troops who were not expected to use their bayonet very often, yet still carried a rifle or carbine 98 and therefore couldn't be issued a bayonet 7184. For example, on October the 1st, 1909, the field zeppelin units were equipped with the KS-98, replacing the old 7184. When the First World War broke out in 1914, following units were issued with the KS-98. Independent machine gun crews, regimental machine gun units, fortification telegraph units, the automobile corps, the imperial german flying corps, the searchlight units from the pioneer battalions, the machine gun crews from the Navy Sea Battalions and probably the most famous Imperial German Colonial Forces called the Schutztruppe. Bayonets from the Schutztruppe are a particular favorite of mine, so at one point I will make a separate video about them. The one thing I want to mention here is that the KS-98 is the only bayonet where it is common to find colonial markings instead of the regular army markings. There was also a specific variant of the KS-98 made for the Schutztruppe with red vulcanite grips, an early type of plastic, instead of the pressed leather. This was done due to the extreme climate in the colonies that rotted away the leather grips. On December the 8th in 1913, there was an order given to all regimental gunsmiths to change the leather grips with three rivets against wooden grips fixed with two screws. These new wooden grip pieces were easier to repair and were more robust. Production of the KS-98 stopped in early 1915 because this bayonet was too expensive in comparison to especially the bayonet 8498 new pattern. The KS-98 was also the first bayonet that got issued together with a steel sheath. Original KS-98 sheath are sometimes hard to identify because they look a lot like the much more common sheath from the Bayonet 8498 new pattern. The KS-98 sheath is just a bit more slim 
and uses the old type spring system. Two small leaf springs pressed at a single point against the blade. The new type, used in the sheath made for the 8498 new pattern and the 9805 new pattern, use two long wave shaped springs. These apply constant pressure so the bayonet is secured in the sheath but also very easy to pull out when needed. Due to its elegant design, the KS98 was very popular as a dress bayonet for officers in the Imperial German Army. So please be careful when trying to buy a KS98. There are much more dress bayonets out there than real issued KS98 bayonets. Make sure to check the stems and markings to identify a real KS98. Let's take a closer look at our markings. As with any other bayonet, we have the manufacturer marking, the proof marks, the property stamp and the unit markings. The manufacturer here is Erfurt, and this is also the most common manufacturer when looking at KS98 bayonets. For all the other manufacturers, here's a quick list you can take a look at. Not a lot to say about these proof marks, they are where they should be. Now, the property mark on this piece is W12, indicating the year 1912 and Kaiser Wilhelm II. As we will see soon, this is a colonial marked KS98. And regarding colonial case 98, W12 is actually very typical. When looking at non-colonial mark case 98, either without unit markings at all or any other Imperial Army markings, W13 or W14 are the most common. It is very hard to find earlier property markings such as W03, 04 or 05. I only have ever seen one case 98 marked with W04. On the other hand, Pieces marked with W15 are also kind of rare because they stopped production 1915. My example here that I showed you with wooden grips is, by the way, marked with W15 and I'm very glad to find it. I had to take a really good look for a few years to find one marked W15. Now let's have a closer look at the really exciting part, the unit markings. For this piece, the unit markings read KS 2988, showing that this bayonet belonged to the Kaiserliche Schutztruppe of German Southwest Africa, weapon number 2988. The unit markings are the only way to tell if your bayonet was ever issued to the Schutztruppe or some colonial units, because different to some navy bayonets, there was no special property mark for colonial bayonets. As mentioned earlier in the video, the KS-98 is not a common bayonet in itself, but it is the easiest bayonet to find with colonial markings. This, however, is only true for bayonets marked with the German Southwest African Schutztruppe, as we had seen here in this piece, because unit markings from other colonies, such as German East Africa or Cameroon, are nearly impossible to find. And this is all I have to say for today, and as always, I would like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment under the video, and also please leave a like or dislike so I can see what am I doing right and where to improve. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but I will see you guys in the next video.